previous lectures, we looked at discrete probability distributions in general. So now we're going to look at a specific discrete probability distribution, namely the binomial distribution. And we will start with an example. Studies suggest that about 10% of the world population is left-handed. Now suppose for a lab practical, students are randomly divided into groups of five, and I'm now interested in the number of left-handed students in each group. This is an example of a binomial experiment. The properties of a binomial experiment is, first of all, the experiment consists of a fixed number of trials. Each trial can result in only one of two possibilities, either a success or a failure. Probability of a success remains constant from trial to trial and the trials are independent. So a binomial variable indicates the number of successes in n trials of a binomial experiment. So we can now return to our example and see whether it satisfies the properties of a binomial experiment. Okay, so first of all, the experiment consists of a fixed number, in this case five trials. The five trials are the five students. Each trial can result in only one of two possibilities. So each student can either be left-handed or right-handed. The probability of a success, which in this context will be left-handed, and the probability of a success remains 0.1 from student to student. And then lastly, um, the trials or the students are independent um, with regard to the left-handed or right-handedness. If a student is left-handed, it will not influence whether the next student is left-handed or right-handed. So in our example, we define the random variable x as the number of left-handed students in our group of five. The probability of a success, left-handed, is 0.1, and the probability of a failure, which in this con context is then right-handed, is 1 minus 0 0.1, which is 0 0.9. So we first want to calculate the probability that none of the students are left-handed. So we want to find the probability that x is 0. Now, because these five students are independent, we can make use of the multiplication rule for independent events. So the probability that the first student is um, right-handed is 0.9. The probability that the next student is right-handed is 0.9 and the same for all five students and we multiply these probabilities because the students are independent so we get a probability of 0.59. So next, if we want to calculate the probability that one of the five students is left-handed, we want to find the probability that x is equal to 1. So there are five simple events that corresponds to one student being left-handed. So either the first student can be left-handed, or the second student, or the third, the fourth, or the fifth, fifth student can be left-handed. So let's just look at the first one there. The probability that the first student is left-handed is 0 0.1. The probability that the second one is right-handed is 0.9. And the same for the remaining students. Okay, so each of these simple events occur with a probability of p times 1 minus p to the power of 4 or 0 0.1 times 0 0.9 to the power of 4. Okay, and because there are five simple events that correspond to this one student being left-handed, we multiply this probability by five. So the probability that one student in my group of five will be left-handed is 0 0.328. Okay, so then we would also like to find the probability that two students out of my group of five are left-handed or three, or four, or the probability that all five students are left-handed. 
and we will follow the same procedure. Okay, so first we will use the product rule for independent events. So if we want to find the probability that x is equal to 2, so let's say that the first two students are left-handed, Okay, so and then next, to find the number of simple events corresponding to a specific outcome for x, we make use of the counting rule. So, in how many ways can we have two left-handed students in our group of five? And that will be five combination two, which is five factorial over two factorial, five minus two, is 3 factorial that is 10. So we will multiply the 10 with this probability um, for each of the simple events. So if we do that we find that the probability that x is equal to 2 is 0 0.0729 and we can do the same for the probability that x is 3 or 4 of, or 5. For example, the probability that x is 5, that we have 5 left-handed students in our group, will just be 0 0.1 to the power of 5. Okay, so we can write down the uh, binomial probability distribution in general. Um, if x is the number of successes in n trials of a binomial experiment, where the success probability is given by p, then we say that x follows the binomial distribution with two parameters, n and p. n is the number of trials, p is the probability of a success. So for our example, x follows the binomial distribution, my n is 5 and my p is 0.1. And then we can make use of this um, formula to find the probability that x takes on any specific value. And just note here that x can take on the value from 0 up until n. So we can find the probability that we have 0 or 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 or 5 students in our group of 5 that are left-handed.